So moving on to the site plans, I have a SketchUp layout template for, of the site plans that I use, which is a four sheet document. I break my site plans up into the disciplines involved. So you'll see here, the first sheet is a construction management and utility site plan. Um, next one is grading site plan. Next one's permanent BMP plan. Last one is landscape plan. The BMP plan is also a stormwater prevention plan. The layering system is set up specifically with regards to the information I want to show per sheet or on all sheets. That's why you'll see some sheets, some layers are set for multi-page display. I'm going to start by having the SketchUp model selected. I'm going to import the same project we just did with the floor plans. And I'll show you a, a quick way that we can um, create a site plan with basic information. So I'm going to go ahead and select the site plan view. I'm going to choose the scale. I would like it to be 8 inch, but I'm fairly confident 10 in, 1 inch and 10 feet is going to fit perfectly on this sheet, as that is the same scale that was used by the surveyor. Uh, I like to have my site plans oriented exactly as the surveyor's plan, so there's continuity between that work, which is part of the construction document set, as well as my set. So now I have the site at scale of 1 inches 10 feet. So the next thing I want to put on there are the property lines, so I select the property line layer. I do the same process I did in floor plans where I copy the SketchUp model from the SketchUp model layer and I'm going to paste it, pasting it onto the property line layer. And once that's done, I'm going to select the view, which is the property line, and then I'm going to vector render it so that you can get a vector line work as well as see through it. Now I'm going to do something that some people might think is crazy, but it actually makes a lot of sense, is I am going to quickly just lock the SketchUp layer so that I know when I'm selecting, I'm only selecting the um, property line. So I'm going to explode it, which people would say, why would you do that? Well, property lines aren't going to change during the project. It's a permanent element, and the purpose for exploding it is now I can change the line work type of the specific property line. So now I can go in and play around with what I want, and typically I like to use four points for the property lines, and I use what is the symbol, which is dash double dot for the property lines. And I look based on the scale, whether I think I like it, you can kind of see it through the blue highlight, but I'll shut that off, what that's done to create the property lines. And then I do that same process for each one of the elements that I know are fixed lines. So as an example, the next one, um, I'm gonna copy the SketchUp model again. And I'm going to make the setbacks. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to the setbacks. And then I will paste, just like I did before. And then I will also change the SketchUp view once it's done copying and pasting to the setback scene. And I will vector render that. I'm going to shut that message off. And now I do the same thing I did to the property lines. And I make sure, I can always tell which one I've got selected by looking at the SketchUp model view. And you can see which scene you have selected. And I'm going to explode it. Then I just have the line work. And then again, I will adjust the line work. And here I'm going to choose two point, a dashed line at point 0.5. So now I have to scale the vector render or the raster rendered version of the site plan with setbacks and property lines in their exact location based upon the original survey. And so you continue this process all the way through until you've got every scene that you've saved, um, including tree locations, including uh, easements. In fact, if I select here, I'll show you the different scenes that we will have and do those same item, items with. Building footprint, property line, um, setback, we've already done easements, utilities, trees, and contours. And the contours are really important. 
A lot of those fixed items that don't change, I do explode so I can control the line work because I know they don't change. Even the contours, um, they do change, but I need to explode them to show how I'm going to change those contours in specific areas. So as an example, this site plan that we're looking at, I actually have a finished version of it. And this is a PDF file that was saved. So you can see the first sheet. And at this stage, this home is in design development. I only have two of the sheets developed. But at all those tree locations, I use a graphic on the tree. The different colors show that it's a difference between a fir or a pine. I have the meets and bounds noted, the setbacks noted. Um, these are actually limitations for the property with regards to coverage calculations, building area, um, setback and height limitations. The next sheet is actually the preliminary grading plan. And this plan right now is just showing what it will look like or the document I'm going to use with the roof off. And then I'll eventually have all of the corners pinned at, at elevation as well as any contours changed. This home actually doesn't have all that many contours. so. It's relatively flat, but there will still be some modification to the existing contours.